Hopefully by now you have your fabric all marked off onto grids as you were instructed in the tutorial part one. If not, it's not too late to get it done prior to next week. After you have that done, you need to baste your two layers of fabric and your batting together prior to stitching. Our next plan of attack is to stitch along all the marked lines. If you're using a domestic machine, you want to put your walking foot on and stitch along the lines so that your fabric doesn't shift. If, however, you're using a sit-down mid-arm machine, you might try using the rulers to stitch along the straight lines. Or, if you have a steady hand, you can just free motion quilt those straight lines. That's totally up to you. The reason we're stitching along these lines is to simulate stitch in the ditch. By doing this, you'll be able to remove your pins if you pin basted, and you're also going to secure the backing of your quilt so that when you start stitching, you're starting with no puckers at all in the back. That's our goal. Those of you who have watched previous training films that I've done know that I never take the overall design, but I break it down into one small section. And that's what I'm doing for you here. Don't be afraid that you can't do this. It's very, very simple if you look at this diagram. There are four steps. Step one goes up and back. Step two, up and back. Step three, up and back. And step four just goes around with a few bumps. And that's it. Once you've mastered this, you're ready to go. I have included in the file section this lesson plan number one so you could build your muscle memory. You can just trace these over and over and over again until you feel really comfortable and then put it to your needle. Are you ready to sew? I wanted to let you know real quick that I did put some instructions in with the lesson plan to tell you how to set up your machine, whether you're using a domestic home machine or a mid-arm machine, giving you needle sizes and things like that. So hopefully that'll be helpful for you. Let's get going. Step one, up and back. Step two, move over a little bit, up and back. Step three, move over a little bit, up and back. Now for step four, we're going to go around those three spokes, almost like a heart, but this heart's going to have three bumps instead of two, putting each one of the humps in between the spokes that you just did, and then back down to the beginning. Now that you've done one, you just move on from there in a different direction, doing the same things. Step one, step two, step three. Let me get the thread out of the way. And then we're going to go around like the heart with the three humps, each one going in between one of those spokes. Just that easy. Now we're back at the beginning. It's time to make another one, but let's trim these threads out of the way first. There, that's better. Now let's make another one. Step one, step two, step three. Now we're going to go around like a heart shape with three humps. Let's keep going. We're on a roll. Step one. Step two. Step three. But this time, let's start the heart on the other side so we can switch directions. And there we go. We're ready to go in to the next flower petal. One. 
two, three, around again like a heart with three humps. Let's keep going. One, two, three, and let's go around again. There you go. Now you'll notice that each one of these has changed in a different direction each time. You don't want them all going the same way. You can backtrack to get down to where you want to go. If you have to fill in some other area, don't be afraid to do that. This design is very forgiving. But it's a good design to fill up a large area. You can make them small or you can make them bigger. It's totally your choice. But each time you're going to go in between the last two petals that you did to make your next petal. I think you can handle this. What do you think? Okay, folks, I think you have this wired now, so you'll be ready to put this in block one of the grid that you stitched out earlier so that you can show us all your progress. Again, it's just the same thing over and over, just going in different directions. One, two, three on the spokes, and one, two, three on the humps. One, two, three. Throughout the whole area, that's what you're doing, and just counting to three and filling it in. I'm going to speed this up a little bit for the sake of time limitations, but I just wanted you to see how we're going to fill in this entire block. You'll stay within the block using the ditch if you have to. Try to fill in as much as you can so that you don't have open spaces. For example, here we're getting up against the, the trim, and you're going to have to try to visualize what would a partial petal look like and put that partial petal up against your stitching in the ditch. And that's how you would do it on a real quilt. And then just keep going from there until you're able to make a whole petal again. Throughout this exercise, you've been making partial petals without even realizing it because you've been running into other petals and it has stopped. So it's no different when you get to the edge. So don't freak out. You just have to remember to take a minute every once in a while and breathe. This is supposed to be fun. So don't stress over it. Have a good time with it. Remember our deal. You're supposed to show me every week what your progress is. So I expect to see a lot of pictures coming up on our sit down forum. Here I'm using the ditch to get up to an area that I hadn't stitched before. Stitching in the ditch can be your friend. Not only does it keep your backing from getting all messed up, it also gives you a place to travel. So we're about finished up with this block here. Next week we're going to do something quite different from this. And I'm just so proud of all of you wanting to learn how to do this and I'm honored to be able to take, your on, take you on your journey you have any questions, you know where to get me. So just drop your questions to me and I'll try to answer each and every one of you. Have a good time.